I feel that all artists are in a kind of situation that patterns their early memories. I was born in Louisiana, Lake Charles, Louisiana. I remember taking little sticks and little mossy forms, and somebody told me that you could make a boat that way with a leaf and a stick and a mossy form. So I began to kind of play with what was on the ground a lot, you know, just thinking about nature. I think all children do that. Later, I would travel the bayous in the motorboat. Louisiana had a whole area of waterways that then led to the Gulf. So there were all kinds of channels and waterways, and I, I knew them. I really preferred being on the water in that way and discovering all these different things. Boats that had sunk many years ago. This is a little bit like, welcome back, Linda. Linda made the model for this, this piece, in this room. I was so grateful. I thought it could have been lost at sea. I didn't know where it was. And then I saw it being stored in Louisiana. Now, those people that know it and know the history can see the fountain. There was a World's Fair contest in New Orleans. It was the last World's Fair in 1984. So I entered my idea, which was the wave. I've always been intrigued by waves, not the large ones that you see at Acapulco in the Pacific, you know, where they roll in and you can, but I was always intrigued by these little golf waves because that's the first that I saw. I think it was maybe in the 70s I had the idea of doing fountains. Because really what I was doing with the urethane was a frozen kind of liquid form. And I thought that that liquid form could be so beautifully extended with water. I had done waves off the wall. For this, I wanted to do a freestanding one. I did a 17 and a half foot cantilever in bronze of the idea of this liquid bronze umbrellaing out and having water. And she constructed the model for this out of foam. One to one ratio, six pound density polyurethane foam. I was using a wire structure underneath, and in this case, I had the idea of a weather balloon. So she had underneath here an original shape of this, and then covered with plastic and then she started applying the foam and letting it run. And the whole room had to all be sealed off and she was in a, uh, well, today we'd almost call it a space suit because the fumes from this were a little bit toxic. And so we had to bring fresh air in from outside, went through a tube into a little uh, a uniform. After she was finished with the model, we made the molds on it and we made the casting. Inside is an arrangement of pipes, water chambers, and everything else. And uh, it's very nice to have it back, and we'll take care of it for her and everything else. I mean, this piece was in a storage area for years after the World's Fair, so it's, uh, it's aged. The surface needs to be restored or recolored to, you know, to her satisfaction. As long as the water works right, that's what really is left. 
UVC. Okay, so no, no tooling, right? Just nothing. We just cut the gates, regular yeah, finish on the yeah. surface. Good. Okay, let's have the water. I was very excited to find that it was still in existence. It was in a sort of a heap of things out in the open and forgotten about, totally forgotten about. I had thought the hurricane might have uh, sort of passed it away and was some anchor somewhere. think of my work as being very classical. Essentially, I think I repeat ideas of nature and I process them and interpret them. I realize that what we learn to do is repress our titillations or our feelings about what we see and we call it taste. What is the way we see? What do we respond to without creating a taste that's agreeable to everyone. I'm not trying to satisfy anyone. I'd really make things because I'm curious. That's the reason. I don't think of shows. I don't think of anything other than it's exciting for me to feel that same excitement that I felt as a kid. <laughs>